Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Shark here with an outstanding 1v1 for you today between two of the best players from South Korea. Playing as the Axis, we have Hellcast, who's ranked number 27 with the DAC, squaring off with Ray, who's ranked number 6 with USF. And casting this one with me is my boy Turtle War, aka Garrett, aka Turtle Boy. Uh, link to his channel is in the description down below. And that's it. Enjoy the game. Alright, here we got, uh, not Ray, Hellcats. Uh, playing as a DAC in red here on the north side of the map, Road to Tunis. Getting the crowd shoots him out. And then Ray, opposite him, starting with his scouts, building a uh, barracks here in blue with the awesome uh, Devil's Brigade logo. Gotta love it. Alright, so, Turtle, I, I've talked to a couple different people about this map, but I'm interested in your approach. When you see Road to Tunis, what stands out to you as important? I mean, the cutoffs are always. I think the cutoffs are what wins and loses this game, and there's four of them, so it's impossible to cover all of them and control all of them at the same time. I feel like you almost have to secure your side and then push and harass as much as you can at the opponent's cutoff. Just that, mainly the two down the middle, more so than the ones on the edges. Yeah, the the ones on the like the it's the east west running cutoffs. They can actually be worked around quite a bit easier than the north-south running road. Um, but still, yeah, I agree with you. The cutoffs are a huge feature of this this map. That and the, the garrisons here in the middle. So, real quick, looks like Hellcats going for double Panzer Grenadier opening alongside the Krodschutzen. And then uh, Ray's has two rifle squads out. And you see his uh, he's got his scouts capping up towards his high fuel point rifles going into the middle here occupying this garrison um and then meanwhile hellcat's kind of doing the same thing right using the crowd shoots on the flank to cap um and it pins pioneer is in a one of the the two garrisons on the east side um out of just because orange pass brought this up that occasionally on this like eastern set of garrisons if you get an engineer with a flamethrower in one of the buildings and you get it to align just right it can actually shoot flames at the other building <laughs> to clear the garrison. But it's a little bit of RNGs is involved. <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask Shark, um, how do you feel? So, I, you know, obviously USF is very rifleman focused in 1v1s right now. Do you ever try to work an engineer into that build? And if you do, when when would you try? So I used to, right? And, and I think it's one of the weaknesses of the U.S. forces that they don't start with an engineer unit, so they can be susceptible to mines early. But lately, I've been going with two scouts uh, because the capping speed uh, is so much higher. It allows you, it, it synergizes really nicely with the rifles. You have a lot of mobility. You cap the map, uh, cap up the map very quickly, and then your rifles allow you to apply a lot of pressure. Um, so that, I mean, that's just me. It looks like Ray instead going for four rifles. So the meta is still very much in effect. And there are these two yeah. squads here. Yeah. Hellcats just retreats. I almost feel like Hellcats is being very respectful. Like, and he's trying to be very deliberate about not taking engagements he doesn't want. Um, so you're seeing the map. It was split nicely down the middle. Now the crowd's just doing some side capping. Yeah. And this rifle squad here in the center pinched between... Two different Panzer Grenadier squads and the Pioneers, the flamethrower, so it'll retreat. That's the well, other Ray thing. Ray doing some nice, just the har harassment on the side, capping up that, or decapping the high fuel and the VP. Yeah, and uh, Hellcats, meanwhile, he took advantage of the fact that that munitions point hadn't been capped at all. And will capture that and benefit from that munitions income for a little bit. Here come the Pioneers of the flamethrower. This is something else that I've seen a lot lately, is... You get a you know your first engineer unit out, throw a flamethrower on it, and it really helps you melt uh, and prevent the infantry units of the other your opponent from using the heavy cover. Yeah, you see these rifles have to keep backing up, and they're just eating rounds uh, from the Panzer Grenadiers who like to to fight at range and from cover. It's a really good play here from Hellcats, taking control of this west side of the map. Ray doing a little bit of counter capping with the scout squad, but they've run into Panzer Grenadiers, so. Uh, at least he was able to decap uh, Hellcat's fuel there for a little bit. 
and now we do see an engineer coming out from Ray. Mm -hmm. I, I was going to say, I typically in team games, I've been trying to get them out as my fourth, you know, third or fourth unit. Um, I haven't done a lot of 1v1s with US though, so I wasn't sure when or where you could even work that in to the build. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think you can. I, I really like the assault engineers. Uh, especially like assault engineer heavy build, especially in team games, um, on the right map, like a very CQC focused map, they can do a lot of work. Uh, both players go in for healing early, right? And the, the flamethrowers basically require that. Um, and then, so Ray, he hasn't, uh, he built a weapon support center, hasn't chosen a battle group. I actually really like the weapon support center. And <laughs> look at Ray immediately also getting engineers with flamethrowers. So I guess two can play at that game. Uh, the weapon support center is a really nice counter to DAC, right? Because you can get the quad 50, you can get the 75 mil conversion, and it gives you some mobility without the manpower bleed that a rifle heavy build can result in. But look at this. We've seen a lot of, uh, like meeting engagements, a lot of combat, but only five total casualties. Both players being very conservative with their manpower, which for DAC is so important to make sure that they can get those upgrades. Hellcat's getting an MG34 out. Yeah, this is this is the benefit of engineers. I, I know you see it, Turtle, but this mine going down. Interesting placement on the mine. Um, I got to remember that spot. Now, they almost get a full cap on the cutoff here, but not quite. But just enough. I mean, the, this, this minute, you know, this 30 seconds that that's going to go uncapped, that's... That's killer, especially we're still in the early game. It's the six minute mark. <laughs> well, <laughs> good placement on the mine, I guess. And the crowd shoots and rolls right through there. So w potentially could have gotten the crowd shoots in. So we see a uh, another mine go down here on this uh, Western VP. Ray going for the infantry support center. He has got a ton of fuel. So his harassment is working. Worth noting that Hellcats has also already gotten the fire support elements upgrade, so we could see a flak filling here shortly. And that pike. The crowd shoots in is very close to the mine. Yeah, what it really needs is is vet one. Oh man, advanced logistics already at the seven minute mark. So, as the captain hits the field, uh, we're probably going to see like nine rifle squads today, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> I would, I, I guess then you're probably going to see armored or airborne. Airborne is nice because you don't got to build the motor pool, right? You can drop the AT guns. Armored for the, the late game easy eight call in. Both allow for some tech skipping. Hellcat's loading a fair amount of manpower. He's going to get an AT gun out, which I understand the thought process, but this is a mistake that I make all the time when I try to be prepared for a vehicle and then the enemy just dives into infantry play instead the, the vehicle never comes <laughs> yeah and you're just like what the eight rods never came <laughs> <laughs> rifles force out of the garrison with a flamethrower but now the engineers show up as well little flamethrower battle i think the dac are going to be forced off here first yeah so they retreat black filling on the way uh for hellcats as well as that pack 38 and then for Ray, a half track on the way out, so we'll see what he does uh, with the conversion. With all this, all these rifle squads, and he's putting a bunch of mines down. I would love to see the demolitions package upgrade for Ray. He's got the fuel for it, so all these rifle squads can just start throwing down mines and, uh, in Jamie's honor, the the big mine occasionally. <laughs> we are seeing a quad mount is going on the, uh, the M3 half track. Yeah, this is this is really nice against DAC. Um, the other thing, actually, Daniel D brought this up. Sometimes the quad 50 can feel underwhelming in terms of its damage output, but apparently its damage goes way up when it's stationary. So we'll see how Hellcats micros it um, moving up and, and doing a little bit less shooting on the move. Looks Interesting. Like yeah, that's something I never thought of the accuracy debuff while it's on the move. Mm hmm. Uh, flag filling out at the same time, which I think, uh, you know, one-on-one -on -one is a much better unit than the quad 50. Even though they're functionally supposed to be the same thing. 
The one rifle squad forced off, but Ray is still able to grab Hellcat's fuel. Hellcat's counter capping. One Panzer Grenadier squad in support, but the quad 50 shows up. Panzer Grenadiers find another mine. Yeah, Ray with excellent munitions control. Actually, there it's it's even for both of them. Plus 41. This is something else that Orange Pest brought up. This is a relatively high munitions map. And so you can be more aggressive with your mine play. Ray going for BAR, so it looks like it's going to be very infantry heavy. Um, and I think we can count out Bursalieri for Hellcats. The, the power window for them is come and gone. Unless he wants to spam Karos. All right, now you're seeing another Panzer Pioneer, and I am willing to bet that they're going to get sweepers on them. Just because Ray's been throwing down mines everywhere. Yeah, I think after the, was it the second or the third mine? Yeah, it's the third mine he hit. I'd be uh, pretty frustrated. Yeah. Black Filling finds a rifle squad in the cover. They take a fair amount of damage. MG34 recapping his fuel. Panzer Grenadiers tangle with rifles on the western side. They're, they should actually lose this. He he pops the focus fire on them, but with the BARs and at point blank. Yeah, and then rifles and engineers, this Panzer, Panzer Pioneer forced to retreat. Risk of going down. Panzer Grenadiers are getting, getting close, but at least force the rifles away. And then here come the engineers. You're seeing Hellcat sinking most of his munitions into uh, MG... But the MG-34 light machine gun upgrade for the Panzer Grenadiers. Oh man, scouts and rifles suppressed by this MG-34. Oh, the scouts get into green cover, so they may actually chunk down this MG-34. Hyperax uh, dueling in the middle. Oh man. Oh, Captain's there, but you can't really do anything about it. And the quad mount could go down here. There's nothing in support. The reverse Ooh. speed keeping up with the, yeah. with the quad mount. Well, as you know, all vehicles have the same gearing in reverse as they do in forward, so. That, you know, I... When Relic made the changes uh, to the vehicle movement acceleration, it did fix a lot of the pathing problems. I think the pathing has gotten a lot better. It might be time to revisit reverse speed kind of across the board. Okay, now this is really interesting. Ray, he's building a motor pool. He actually had a sniper on the way briefly. I, that, come on, Ray, build, build the he sniper. It. <laughs> I want to he see knew he was going to send this in. He was teasing us. <laughs> Here we go. Rifles and uh, Pgrens with flamer support. This is hilarious. All the units are standing out of cover so they don't get debuffed by the flamethrowers. That's no. the game work has intended. Oh, engineers. But they're going to get away. In an adjacent engagement, rifles close the distance. You'd love to see this focus fire here for the Panzer Grenadiers. Pour it on them, Pop. But it looks like the Panzer Grenadiers are going to win this engagement. Yeah, down to two models. Rifles force away. Another rifle squad shows up. Panzer Grenadiers in this garrison are in a great spot to win and control the center. And Ray's got two AT guns on the way out now. So I think we can rule out airborne then, because yeah, you think with the, he has six CPs, you could have just tech skipped or used the battle group to get uh, the AT guns out. So I wonder what his plan is. Yeah, the uh, crowd shits at vet one. I really thought it was going to tangle with those engineers, but it chooses not to. Rifles in this garrison, for whatever reason, are shooting at the crowd chusen. It could get knocked out here if he's not careful. Yeah, the penetration on the BAR is knocks out the crowd chusen. So that's a big loss for Hellcats. He was doing a great job of making good use of that vehicle, getting a lot of harassment in. And now Ray is kind of occupying the center here. Black filling moves over, forces away one rifle squad. Yeah, both players are prepared for vehicles with uh, AT guns out. <laughs> Battle of flamethrowers here in the center. <laughs> Neither unit in cover. Oh, Flak Filling decides it. Now, Hellcats doing okay. Actually winning on KD. 
Uh, but down to about 250 VPs now. Ray now teching grenades for the third time. Um, <laughs> AT gun's gonna move up to try to get a shot off on this flak filling. But I like the way Hellcats has it positioned, right? Using the sight blocker as much as possible. And I wonder if he's gonna... Oh, double AT gun. Use the scouts with a flare to set up a shot on this at max range. Get a good volley off. Um, I don't know if Hellcats has gotten any of the upgrades, so a, a quick volley might be enough to knock it out. I, I think he has... Yes, he has gotten the vehicle survival package upgrade. Okay, so that, that would be enough to survive the two AT gun shots. But he, he, fortunately, he sees it approaching, so he moves away. There's the flare. MG-34 behind cover here to suppress these uh, U.S. infantry. Scouts smoke it. Black filling arrives. Those two AT guns going to move up. And this is dangerous because there are engagements happening all the way across the map. And so the flag filling takes one shot, takes a second. Oh. It moves, pops the smoke, and just in time to get away. Yeah, I wonder if Ray tried to set that up. Look at these. Oh, man. Ray wow. taking advantage of engagements across the map, throwing grenades. He's got... Hellcat's kind of on the ropes and wins all three, forcing Hellcat's back to base. I loved in the middle there was a captain and an engineer were taking on one uh, Panzergren squad. I feel like that's a great combo. Because mm -hmm. you wouldn't think it'd be that powerful, but especially out in the open, it's enough to win. Hellcat har successfully harasses the fuel, but those pioneers forced to retreat, and now Ray uh, taking the cutoff here. Fortunately, Hellcats has enough fuel. He's got tier 4 built. He can pop out a P3 right now if he wants, but he does have to worry about those two AT guns. Meanwhile, Ray also floating a ton of resources. All right, Hellcats, he has chosen armored support. He's going for the uh, the coax and hull machine gun upgrade, salvage kits, Panzer Storm. So, yeah, I think that's that's relatively standard if you're not going to try to play with the Flam Panzer. Ray has gone armored. All the way up through War Machine and Strength and Steel. Uh, and he's getting a Greyhound out. Which I think the Greyhound has been less popular uh, against the DAC after the last patch. I'd agree with that. And so I'm wondering what his plan is. is if it's just to kind of ward off the flak uh, track or... Uh... Oh, he canceled it and he's building a tank depot. I think that's I think that's a lot smarter, to be honest. <laughs> Captain Mortar Barrage coming in. Panzer Grenadiers see it and move out of cover. Yeah, it's it's at the 17 minute mark. You're the Greyhound. Yeah, maybe it can catch the flak filling, but with a pack 38 and three Panzer Grenadier squads on the field. <laughs> Instead, Hellcat's going to go for armored reserves rather than get a vehicle out now. I don't think he's going to stall for a Tiger, but maybe going for the P4 with some Assault Grenadiers. Oh man, big push here in the center. Now here come the Engineers of the Flamethrower. They're going to be able to force these Panzer Grenadiers out. Yeah, now just Panzer Pioneers here on the, on the wall. They're eating a ton of damage from the Flamethrower as well. But they're going to get away without dropping, oh, just dropping one model. Now Panzer Grenadier is contesting Ray's cutoff. I feel like those two AT guns have just made this Flackerling completely impotent. He's so worried about losing it that he's not able to move it around the way he wants. There we go. There's some suppression onto the engineers. Does he have? Yeah, he. Uh, Ray got a second engineer with a flamethrower. So I guess he's really not worried about DAC mines. Which is interesting. Both players with two engineer units, you'd think mines would be everywhere. Hellcat is floating a good amount of munitions too. I wonder if he's waiting for the, the lawyer. waiter to come into play. Yeah, he has four CP, so he could get the dive bomb if he wanted it. He, yeah, he's got the light machine guns. There we go. All right, so the P4 call in. I like it. I think that's a really good choice. The Assault Grenadiers will help him with AT guns. Oh, wow. Flackfilling eats two shots. 
but backs away in time to prevent the AT guns from knocking it out. T4 hits the field. Uh, ditches the assault grenadiers. Where did they go? I would have kept them on there. You drive up, you find those AT guns with the P4, the assault engineer or assault uh, grenadiers hop off. They get their speed and, and damage bonus. You can do a lot of work. Meanwhile, Ray also floating a ton of manpower. I wonder if we're going to see a third AT gun or another rifle from him. So Panzer IV forces off the rifle squad holding Ray's primary fuel there. Lots of mines going down on the west side. Ray still, how much, how much fuel exactly is an easy eight? 110. So Ray's about 30 away from that. Yeah, he's unlocked the production. It's only 330 manpower. Um, now, if Hellcats wasn't on his doorstep with uh, this infantry, I would say Throwing a, a cash down on one of these fuel or munitions points might not be a bad investment. Panzer Pioneers find the mine on the VP. Now the flak being able to move up. The AT guns are back in base, so these vehicles are going to run roughshod over Ray's forces. Wow, and Hellcats has shoved Ray back into his base. Ray getting a third AT gun and now a sniper. So maybe we will see the sniper play. Man, I don't know how you micro four rifle this squads. This many units. Yeah, two AT guns, a sniper, that's a lot. Rifles here. Trying to force these Panzer Grenadiers off of the fuel. And they're successful. E4 rotating that direction, as is the flak for length. They do have to be careful. These AT guns are on the flank now. But look at all that infantry moving up in support. Blackfilling suppresses the rifle squad, pins it. Double flame engineers forced by the Panzer Grenadier. And the AT guns are up here in support. I don't know if uh, Hellcats has seen him yet, but you can tell he's anticipating it. He's not keeping his vehicles static. He's moving them around. Did he get the uh, the vehicle emergency repair kits upgrade too? Can you see? He has. Okay, so that's yeah. a, that's another 120 HP for all of his vehicles, plus the auto repair. And I think that's the KD 63 to 34. Hellcats has honestly quite a manpower advantage right now over Ray. Ray has pretty solid army composition, but having all that spare manpower has allowed him to really invest in upgrades, which is what you have to do to, to survive a stack. Alright, Sniper is here in support. Hellcats putting mine down first. Easy 8 is on the way. Sniper's gotta be careful that flak filling. Sniper gets his first kill on an engineer in the pioneer unit with the minesweeper. P4 and some infantry supporting a push on the east side. Oh, Panzer <laughs> Pioneers without a minesweeper find a mine. It looks like he's thrown. Oh, the assault engineers are in a building. I saw the little icon. I thought they were riding on top of a vehicle. Oh, they're, they're in that garrison. So easy it hits the field. Three AT guns now for Ray. And. I don't know if Hellcats knows. Oh, rifle squad takes a lot of damage. Wow, good salvo comes in on the P4 and the flak for Oh, oh my man. gosh, mine goes off. Easy 8 could knock out. One squad of Panzer Pioneers goes down uh, on the VP here. And then the P4 and the flak for force to move back and lick their wounds. Pack 38 MG34 there to cover the center. But the easy 8 hits the field and immediately makes a big impact. Supported by those AT guns. I honestly, I wouldn't be surprised to see Ray maybe go for a, a med half crack to help keep those AT guns topped up. Oh, Pack 38 gets a shot off on the easy 8 Rifles in the garrison. 
Yeah, they force away the assault grenadiers. Man, the pace of this game. And the constant, like, back and forth. It's hard for me to keep it all on camera. I had insane map control and, and unit preservation and just multitasking on display here. Yeah. And you see the Pac-38 targeting this garrison intends on knocking it out. Now it refocuses on the EZ-8, which bounces the first shot. Ray looks like is going to put up uh, a fighting position. Uh, kind of just outside his base, behind a sight blocker there, most likely going for a mortar pit. I, I like that at this stage in the game, because I think that's going to allow him to do some extra damage to the Panzer Grenadiers who like to fight from cover. Oh man, this scout squad, Ray sees it, but a little bit late. Easy 8 moves up to support. Now here comes the oh. uh, armored support loiter. Oh, and the snare almost got off. And the first uh, strafing run does a fair amount of damage. But Ray has no AA, so this is going to continue. Oh my gosh, it's targeting the EZ-8 all the way in the base. Relic, please fix. Oh, Panzer Grenadiers take a huge grenade, go way down on health. But they're going to both get away here. Not really at risk of getting wiped. Yeah, the loiter, you know, it's not the Luftwaffe loiter, right? So it only tar targets vehicles. And so this is something Ray can play around. Sniper just going to continue to pick away at these Panzer Grenadiers. Oh, walking Stuka Barrage comes in. What's it targeting? It's targeting the Sniper. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Four oh nearly my. direct hits in the Sniper. Rest in peace, bro. Like, literally, pieces. Oh. Well, there goes the sniper play we wanted to see. <laughs> Holy crap. Imagine getting a walking Stuka to counter a sniper and then he, hitting he, it on the first he, shot. I, I'm not going to imagine things here. He saw that sniper and I believe he he instantly got out the Stuka. So he may have been <laughs> planning that from the beginning. Oh man, Mortar Pit forces away the MG34 position in the center. That's going to provide Ray with a lot of control. And honestly, may also reach to the Western VP. Ray getting a second EZ-8 out. Hellcats floating some resources, some fuel here. You wonder if he's going to go for a second P4 or if he's going to hold out for the Tiger. I feel like with all the upgrades he has, well, he's he's going to be pop cap, so he might be forced into a second P4. Good push here from Hellcats on the Western VPs. Ray's infantry on the way out of base here. Wow, and, and since I remarked on it last, Hellcats been able to cut Ray's VPs down to 230. Ray still has the advantage, but he's he's cut it down significantly. And then KD still in Hellcat's favor, but not nearly as steep. It's going from a two to one to a 1.3 to one. Second easy eight is here. And was that the walking Stuka coming in? It is. Yeah, it's targeting yep. the rifle squad in front of the AT guns. Ooh, one rifle squad at just a sliver of health. I don't know if Ray sees it. MG34 kills one. There's just one model left. And MG34 gets the kill. Hands are gonna is clear one of the 57 mil AT guns. Oh, mine hits an EZ8 here. So Ray's got an engine critted EZ8, fortunately supported by two AT guns. Blackfilling forces away the captain. Oh, good salvo comes in on the Blackfilling. He does. Fortunately, he pops smoke and gets it away. Across the map, Panzer Grenadier here and Rifleman going almost to the last man. And Ray's going to replace that lost rifle squad. The the whole fight has been taking place over on this side of the map, where that Stuka 
uh, volley just was. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, every every time I look over, there's at least one unit, one v or two units, one v one in on the other side. On the east side, yeah. Well, now this Panzer Grenadier squad may get caught out. Super low health and overextended. Easy eight from Ray, considering whether or not he wants to pursue. One model left. There's a pack thirty eight coming up to support. Maybe hoping for one good RNG. Oh, he almost picks it up, but not quite. And now, oh, compromise armor used by the Pack 38. Good use of the vet ability there. So that easy eight forced to back up. Ray looks like may get the triple cap on here, which he desperately needs. We're at the point now, triple cap would uh, cut Hellcats down in about two and a half minutes. Well, I take it back. Hellcats is going to cap the West VP with these Assault Grenadiers. And now he's pushing on the center. P4 moves in. Armor Support Lawyer oh. drops again. Oh, that easy. may be all too for that easy A. Yeah, it clears the circle. It's still targeted. Just a sliver of health left. He's got to keep it as far away outside the circle as if that mattered. Oh, big AT gun brush comes in on the P4. I'm, I'm waiting for the second salvo, but they don't show. Walking Stuka firing. I don't know what it was shooting at. Maybe the scouts? It kind of whiffs. Maybe it was just there to force away these AT guns. The Ray's Easy 8 gets away. And he's still putting pressure on the West VP, even with all of that uh, map presence and pressure that Hellcats just put put on him. And he's going to take this fuel too, which might be critical because Hellcats, I mean, he's about a minute in manpower away from a Tiger. Now he's pop cap, but we'll see if he loses a unit. He could just replace it with a Tiger, which might actually be a worse trade for Ray. Yeah, and I wonder what unit that would be. What, at this point, would you sacrifice? Maybe the MG34, but I don't know if that'd be enough. You, I think if you're, like, if your flak filling goes down, gets cornered and knocked out by the AT guns, it's an instant just quick tiger. In my mind, that's the most likely. I, I very rarely see a flak filling make it 32 minutes into a match. And he's not worried, because it's armored, he's not worried about US air abilities. Oh, a couple AT gun shots come in. P4 pops smoke and backs up. Oh, man. Yeah, big volley comes in. This is crazy. Oh, this Panzer Grenadier squad may go down. And they do. I wonder, I think, is it 21 pop cap for the Tiger? It is. He has exactly enough. He has exactly what he needs. But look at the, I mean, the VP pressure that Ray is putting on. Somehow he's still, I feel like Hellcats has been doing a great job with the, the army composition. And the Tiger hits the field. But Ray still has two of the three VPs. You know, that may have been the best trade for Hellcats. I mean, now he still <laughs> has the flak track, the P4, and the Tiger. And he's pop cap, so you're going to see the manpower that he can't use potentially used on... Uh, more of the upgrades, the armory upgrades. Oh, big Stuka Barrage comes in on the engineers and the rifle squad. A lot of damage. Easy 8s find the Tiger in the pack 38. They clear the pack 38. Now the 57 mils come up. Armor piercing rounds engage. And it looks like everything's going to focus on the P4, which fortunately bounces one of the 57 mil shots. So Ray somehow comes away from that engagement, having taken a lot of map control. Black Furling escapes a snare from a rifle or a mine. I forgive me. Looks like this Pack 38 is going to get cleared. And now a third Easy Eight on the way. And this is where it gets dangerous, even with the Tiger, even with the P4. You start getting that critical mass of Easy Eights. You start getting that veteran seed. They're just so fast. So one snared, that Panzer Grenadier squad has to retreat. One AT gun clear. MG34 moves up. 
it immediately takes a bunch of chunk damage. Now, the Tiger and the P4 approach. Oh, man. The, the Suka Loiter is off cooldown, but nowhere near enough munitions to call it in, which is what you'd really need here. Stuka rocket launch has to be near and it's cooldown. Yeah. Tiger, well, all the shots penetrate. The Tiger's forced to back up. Oh, uh, Panzer Pioneers wiped by these rifle squads. MG34 knocked out. And suddenly the army composition looks very much in Ray's favor. He's got the triple cap. Hellcats has one minute to claw this back. He's capping the east side VP. But these vehicles have to move back for repairs. And he's just... Look at his, his infantry, his army composition. He's down to just three squads. And lost that, a flak track, lost a Panzer Pio. Lost a Panzer Grenadier, lost his Pac-38 and his MG-34. I... Oh, man. Hellcats did such a good job all game. Look at the KD. I think... I think he was definitely in the lead for all this game, but one poor engagement. He's he, yeah. Yeah, just didn't go his way. Yeah. Looks like the walking suit is getting ready to launch. Now, Hellcat's capturing the center VP. Walking Stuka is trying to help cover these assault engineers. But at this range, the scatter significant. The rifles retreat. But these assault grenadiers are not going to be able to deal with the triple vet rifleman. Oh, nice smoke grenade, but the counter frag. So Ray going to retake the East VP. Pins are going to be trying to hold the center, getting him apart with mortars, and now three easy hates roll up. Oh, that's a bad day for anybody. And they're just going to drive this home. P4 full health, Tiger almost there. But just not enough power, and the penetration on the EZ8 is too high. And then with these 57 mils here, Ray's going to get the triple cap back. And at that point, we're looking at about 30 seconds. Tiger here on the flank with some Panzer Pioneers. So I think he's he recognizes, he says, I need to capture at least one of these VPs to, to stop the bleeding. But then how is he going to get a second? He doesn't even, he doesn't have barely enough units to capture three points at the same time. Yeah, walking Stuka's on cooldown. These Panzer Grenadiers, look at this, just wave of armor. Oh, the 76 mil rounds, those Panzer Grenadiers forced to depart. Oh, Stuka's getting a little too close. Yeah. Oh, down to 75 VPs. Even if these guys, no, they can't cap, oh. cap fast enough. Walking Stuka Barrage comes in, but this is just for some sort of moral victory. And that's going to do it. Ray holds on to knock out Hellcats. All right, start and build order review with Hellcats. Obviously, he starts with the Panzer Pioneers, and then pretty meta, kind of tier two build here from the deck. So Karach is in three Panzer Grenadiers, gets his tier two out, goes fire support elements. He goes med truck early, which I really like. Um, both players really focus on getting medical up to, to draw down that manpower bleed. MG34 to help deal with kind of the rifle spam. Uh, four rifle squads, you can debate if it's spam. It's kind of how the USF have to play right now. But the MG HMG is a really good um, counter to that. He gets a Pac-38. We talked about it. It's a little premature for now, especially because Ray's not really playing with vehicles. Then the flak for Ling. And then he immediately texts the vehicle survival package, which is really, really useful. It allows you to survive that second AT gun shot. Gives you the smoke. Um... He gets the second Panzer Pioneer out. He's hit so many mines at this point. He needs the Minesweeper. Then he attacks veteran squad leaders, which, uh, I mean, he has three Panzer Grenadier squads. So that's a huge buff. They all get a sixth man. Um, but for all the other infantry, like even if you're playing Bursas, I uh, highly recommend this tech is high priority for you as DAC. Uh, then he goes Armored Support Battle Group, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, gets his Tier 4 out, goes straight for Armored Reserves in that P4 calling with the Assault Grenadiers. Text emergency repair kits for the extra health and the, the stationary repairs. Then he gets a walking Stuka. I really like this choice. I think it makes sense given the uh, the heavy AT gun play that Ray is using. Uses it fairly well. The shot on the sniper is awesome. Um, and then when he uh, he loses a squad and gets a Tiger 1 out, um, you would think Tiger would be a huge power spike, but at this point with the AT guns and the, the easy 8s on the field, it actually doesn't do as much as you need it to do. 
Uh, and then late in the game, he replaces a lost squad of Panzer Pioneers. Uh, first battle group unlocks the superior fire drills for the MG damage bonus. Um, goes for the salvage kits, the uh, the Blitzkrieg ability, and then the loiter. Um, we talk about this a little bit with Garrett, but uh, I really I think the loiter is a little bit wasted um, in this build just based on what Ray was doing. It can be super overpowered, um, but on this map with only a couple of vehicles. I kind of wonder if the, the dive bomb might have been better. Um, so that's going to be it for Hellcats. And now on to Ray. Ray kicks it out with a scouts, barracks, and then four riflemen. Um, he goes med station early. He gets engineers, throws a flamethrower on him. This is to counteract the Panzer Pioneer player, the Panzer Grenadiers. Really interesting that like both players end up being forced to stay out of cover to avoid the damage from the flamethrowers. Then he, he gets a weapon support center out. He techs infantry support center and straight into advanced logistics. So um, this is why I, I wish there was some sort of indicator uh, for the DAC player that advanced logistics is, is on, right? Because that's 70 fuel. But right? if you know that advanced logistics is kicked in, then you know that Ray is not going to get a vehicle out anytime soon, right? And then that, that informs your choices. Maybe at that point it makes sense to invest in an 8-rod or go for the Stug D. Um, or maybe you just don't get that pack 38 and you focus on getting a P3 out sooner or you focus on additional upgrades. A bunch of different options there. I wish there was some counterplay or indicator uh, game knowledge that, that set that up. But um, I think the weapon support center is a good choice. He gets the quad 50 out. Um, it does okay. Basically just gets burned down by the flag filling uh, relatively quickly. Um, the quad 50 is good at countering the DAC if you can keep it alive. And then later in the game, if you'd had it, it would have been great to deal with that uh, armored support loiter. Tex BARs, uh, his rifles really just scale well throughout the game. Um, Hellcats really struggles to deal with them with infantry. Gets a second engineer out with another flamethrower. Um, and the combination of the flamethrower engineers and the rifles is just brutal because the Panzer Grenadiers want to fight from cover and they can't. Then he goes motor pool, straight into two AT guns. He's obviously floating a lot of manpower. Um, from there, he gets a grenade package. Uh, Tex armored battle group and goes immediately for like the war machine and power discount on the vehicles um, Gets a third AT gun gets a sniper out sniper does some work before it meets its uh, Really kind of grisly end there. You like to see the sniper play though. Like it's something a little bit different um, I don't know how much it really impacted this game, but it's a cool thought and then from there It's really easy eights uh, a mortar pit in the middle. I really like that choice. It helps them hold the terrain again You're trying to force Panzer Grenadiers out of cover where they want to fight. Uh, three Easy Eights replacement rifle squad, and and really because he's able to keep the Easy Eights alive, supported with the rifles and the three AT guns. I mean that's an army composition that's just really hard to deal with unless you have a ton of artillery. Uh, Hellcats gets the walking Stuka, but he still can't he can't shove it off there. The armor battle group again vehicle uh, that one, which is really helpful late game because all of your Easy Eights show up with uh, you know that one and that ability, whether it's white phosphorus or HE rounds. The Wrecker doesn't get it out. Um, the War Machine for the Manpower Discount, which is helpful, right? He can probably afford the Mortar Pit because he's saving manpower on the Shermans. Then he goes Strength and Steel for the Reduced Pop Cap. Um, really helpful here in helping him maintain a huge army size. Right? I know it's tempting to go for rapid production, but I like Strength and Steel. Seek so and Destroy ability. Um, picks that, but doesn't end up using it. And then goes, obviously, Easy 8 production. If you've got the Tank Depot, you've got War Machine. Uh, Easy 8 production is way better than the call in. All right. I'm back with Turtle War. Garrett, uh, what'd you learn today, man? Uh, I learned that just <laughs> sometimes you, it may look like you have it in the bag, but you got to follow through and execute perfectly. I, I think this match, both players played great. Uh, Ray started off really good, uh, got advanced logistics by what, like the seven minute mark? <laughs> yeah. Um, so fast. But Hellcats did a, 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 a amazing job coming back uh, through the mid game, played really well, uh, took back or kind of evened it up with the VP control. And at the end had just had almost everything lined up for a kill shot. But when Hellcats went in for that kill shot with the Tiger and the P4 and the flag track, uh, it just seemed like he hit a wall and bounced off the wall and lost mm -hmm. half his force just about. Yeah, I, that's that's pretty much where it was decided. Yeah, I you know I think uh, you hit on a couple of things that I like. One, I think Ray did a good job not bleeding manpower early, 
and then he got the advanced logistics. Um, and so then he could be a little bit more aggressive with his infantry. And so even though he was down on KD, it always felt like he had manpower for days. Like that's how you afford a sniper and three AT guns. Um, it's something that like, if you're, if you're playing USF and you feel like you don't have a ton of manpower, you're probably being a little sloppy with your rifle micro in the early game and you're, and you're bleeding, uh, model drops. And like you saw, there are like the first seven minutes of engagements are only five casualties between the two players. So that that was one thing. Um, he was pretty Ray was pretty clean. The only vehicle he lost all game was the quad fifty um to the flak for Ling. So I think that was part of it. Like keeping his easy eights alive, allowing them to vet, not letting Hellcats pick up one of those vehicle kills. Like that was huge for him. And then um I think Hellcats had the right idea with the walking Stuka, right? When you see three AT guns, you need, the way to counter that is artillery, right? Especially because you're not gonna be able to beat the US infantry if you can't wipe some squads early. Like four rifles with two engineers and flamers, um, you're not gonna be able to counter that with three Panzer Grenadier squads, especially not in a 1v1 on a wide map like Red Tunis. I almost wonder if maybe the LEIG would have been a good counter, um, if you could protect it, put it in the back so you're just constantly harassing those AT guns. Even if all you do is chunk down a model or two, then when the P4 finds an AT gun, it shoots and maybe it clears it, right? Um, yeah. But it, I mean, it's so hard. And like the LEIG is so good. Um, I feel like, like, I feel like I need it. But I, we talked about it a little bit. A part of the issue is that Dak used to be able to counter the vehicle or the infantry heavy us play with vehicles like the eight rod um because the flag filling while it's great it's mainly there for suppression right and so you you need your panzer grenadiers to go kill stuff um the eight rods if you get a couple of them you could punish rifles for overextension you could knock them down and retreat and it's just it's so expensive it's such an investment um you just don't see players do it anymore and and I wonder if that was over the top just a little bit in that last patch. Yeah, and it, it's it's funny you you said uh, how Ray didn't let you know other than the quad mount. Yeah, he he kept that one easy eight alive by a sliver. It, it backed out of that loiter, and I feel like that's that's one of the things that just tipped it in his way having those three easy eights at the end and not just two. Um, and yeah, it's like what wins uh, a massive force of of you know, four or five riflemen, three AT guns, or a very upgraded, specialized, vetted up force of the of what Hellcats had. Um, and I feel like they were going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. It felt very even mm -hmm. for most of the game. Yeah, I, I really thought Hellcats was going to win there. Um, I thought, even though he's behind on VPs, I thought his army composition was, was better. Um, I This is where... Like we we've we talked about skill planes so many times on this channel. Um as a rule though, I'm at the point where like I choose the Stuka dive bomb because I think the skill planes are dumb. But this might be a spot where that dive bomb could have been much bigger, much more effective um than than the loiter, right? Because Ray only had three vehicles and they were the mm -hmm. three easy eights. And the map is wide enough that for the most part like even the one time one got caught out, it it managed to survive. So the both loiters has five hundred munitions with zero kills to show for it, right? But um, a dive bomb, well placed dive bomb on those AT guns, you just knock them out. And if you set it up right, you know then you can go for the knockout blow. Because if you clear the AT guns, that engagement between you know Tiger and a P four and two Easy Eights probably swings in the favor of the DAC. Yeah, yeah, I, I think you're right about that. The, the dive bomb, you know, hindsight's 2020. Mm -hmm. uh, that dive bomb would have been killer at the end. Yeah. Uh, trying to think if there's anything else. Um, honestly, both players are so good. I think this is where you see, like, even at this level, like, Ray's micro just stands out. Um, he's His map awareness is just so obscenely good. Right. One, he he never 
even when Hellcats had him on the back foot, never gave in to pressure, was always counter capping VPs. And then um, there was that one engagement where they literally had three different fights going across the map. And, um, you know, Hellcats was able to save his flak filling from getting knocked out by the AT guns, but he almost lost a Panzer Grenadier squad in two other spots in a combination of grenades and then just good double teams. And, and so that's like, to me, that's the difference. That's what makes Ray such a special player. Um, yeah, and you, you see it in the endgame engagements. He's just able to claw things back that you would think like, oh no, there's no way he wins this. Uh, and, and how many times did they push to each other's uh, the base fuel, you know, mm -hmm, back mm -hmm. and forth. It felt like they were, it was just all over the place and they would swing back on the other side and uh, counter cap. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's insane to watch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just, yeah, really impressive. So, um, Turtle, you got anything else for us? No, that's all. This was an uh, awesome match. Yeah, thanks for sitting down with me. Um, that's going to do it for us, guys, and we'll see you all in the next one.